Hello, everybody. This is Justin Case of American Newscape. Joining our friend, doctor, surgeon, and medical advocate for a premier installment of American Awesome. Hello, Dr. Marchand. Welcome to Hello. America Newscape. Thank you for having me. Hey, we're excited about this. You're, you're, you're on the cutting edge of an issue that we're all just beginning to hear a little bit about. So thanks for coming to shed some light on the new over-the-counter oral birth control that's now available. Well, yeah, thank you for having me on the show. It's it's pretty exciting news. Um, this is something that a lot of organizations had really clamored for for a while, especially ACOG, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. You know, that's the biggest organization of obstetricians and gynecologists in the U.S. And they have been pushing for this for a while. Um, and it's it's finally come to fruition that there is a, a, a real birth control pill that's going to be available uh, without a prescription in the U.S. It'll be available as soon as 2024. Um, and I, I do think that the big, uh, uh, the big impetus to this was, uh, you know, the Supreme Court correcting the Roe versus Wade and, and Dobbs mistakes where, you know, previously we had thought that there was maybe like something in the Constitution where there was a hidden section that, uh, that gave a right to abortion. Now that that's been fixed, uh, I think good things like this are happening where there, there's going to be more availability to birth control. <laughs> I heard somebody uh, saying that the conservatives have put us into a nightmare future where women have great access to birth control and they're using abortion a whole lot less. Well, we certainly don't want babies born to mothers that don't want them. And, uh, you know, should we should we be concerned about uh, this new pill that's going to be available? Yes, there's, there's certainly going to be some downside to it. Uh, there's going to be some people that look at the convenience of buying a birth control pill without a prescription and uh, unfortunately neglect their responsibilities, uh, especially responsibilities to take their children to normal, proper medical care or neglect their own responsibilities to their own body to go for normal medical care. They might just be picking up this prescription, uh, or I'm sorry, prescription-free medication uh, or medication that doesn't require a prescription. They might just be picking that up year after year and missing out on very important exams and the, the downside to that you know all these uh, diseases that we screen for at these exams particularly cervical cancer and breast cancer unfortunately if, if uh, people are doing this or skipping these visits we're going to see an increase in those cancers and that's certainly unfortunate um, but as far as the medication itself if you look at what the FDA has done they really picked a, a birth control pill uh, that's going to be very safe it's going to be one that's going to be very tough to abuse it doesn't have any estrogen in it so we're not going to be worried about things like blood Blood clots. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's basically a pill that could do the least harm. It's, it's very difficult to find a patient who this pill would harm. It's not that they don't exist. There are women with progesterone sensitive breast cancers and other tumors. Uh, but for the most part, this isn't a pill that if it gets into the wrong hands, is going to cause a lot of harm. And it's also an effective pill, meaning that if you take it at about the same time every day uh, and you use a backup method for at least a week or at least the first week you're taking it, it's going to be very, very unlikely that you're going to become pregnant. It's, it's a good pill as far as working in that sense. Um, but it's not a good pill in that most OBGYNs would not choose this pill for most patients. It's particularly poor at cycle control because it doesn't have any estrogen in it. And it doesn't have those nice anti-androgenic properties uh, that a lot of birth control pills have. What I mean by that is a lot of birth control pills will help you uh, reduce acne, reduce facial hair, arm hair, uh, you know, kind of get rid of those, uh, those, hor uh, those testosterone hormone effects that can affect you, especially in teenage years, but later in life too. And you're not going to really get any of those benefits with this pill. You're basically just going to get a very, very safe pill um, uh, that, that's really not going to be the first choice for very many uh, obstetricians if you were in their office seeing them. Well, you're, you're an obstetrician. Now, what if we sent our daughter to see you, what, what medications would you be talking to her about? So for, for patients that are going to have, uh, well, first of all, what's the decision to be on birth control or not? Are, are we going to are we going to address that? Or are we just talking about a patient that, that wants to be on birth control uh, for reasons of cycle control? or, or We're talking about um, a teenage daughter that is wanting to be on birth control. And so, uh, you know, an OBGYN, if they're doing their job, they're going to sit down with the patient. They're going to go over all the the, the patient's medical history um, and over the patient's symptoms and, and see what's going to be most appropriate. Uh, so for most women, you're going to want a pill that has both estrogen and progesterone, 
not this over-the-counter pill because the estrogen is going to help control cycles. Um, it's going to give women more desirable cycles, less days bleeding, and less chance of breakthrough bleeding that could ruin your day or, or ruin your clothes because you're not expecting it. Um, so you wouldn't prescribe this pill to, to very many women. Um, of course, the reason that that estrogen-based pill I'm talking about is not going to be available in stores is estrogen uh, affects a great number of women adversely. Um, it's not like the progesterone pill that is more or less harmless. Estrogen could do a lot of harm to a lot of women, uh, especially older women or women with cardiovascular disease. Uh, further, you're going to want to look at this patient who needs birth control uh, holistically. Um, certainly uh, in the uh, adolescent and teenage years, that's when a lot of women are going to develop testosterone symptoms from polycystic ovarian syndrome. So you may want to tailor with a, a birth control pill that's going to start fighting those hormones so they don't get other undesirable symptoms. And then lastly, you're really going to want to pay attention to any reactions they've had with previous methods of birth control, because birth control does affect everyone differently, and different estrogens and progesterones uh, can cause uh, different effects on, on, on different women. Uh, very, very often I'll hear a woman say things like, I can't take that birth control, I just don't feel like myself, or that birth control makes me a mad woman, or, uh, <laughs> or I feel like such a bitch when I'm on it, I can't be on that. So there's a lot of factors you take into a uh, uh, to, to consideration, um, but the one that they are offering over the counter really wouldn't be a very common one to prescribe. Well, that's the importance of the relationship of a woman with their OBGYN, correct? Oh, very, very true. Absolutely. That's why I'm certainly hoping that this doesn't cause uh, women to start skipping visits and just uh, picking up their birth control at CVS. Well, in most, in, you know, at least in, I'm a little longer in the tooth, but most women I've known that have if found cancer, uh, particularly cervical cancer, it was done by their obstetrician or their gynecologist. Right, and uh, pap smears uh, were the very first test that we ever came up with uh, that could actually detect a cancer before it became a cancer. Um, there's a, a kind of a, a, a schedule for pap smears that adjusts according to how old you are uh, and what your previous pap smears have been. So I, I can't give you a basic guideline, but it's something that's done at least every few years. Uh, and it's a very important test. And uh, certainly if someone's not getting pap smears, cervical cancer could be allowed to form, even reach an advanced state where it's incurable. And uh, you know, that would be a, certainly a horrible thing that could happen as a result of this convenience. Um, so all in all, I don't think we should take this convenience away, but I think it is important to remind people that it's very irresponsible to skip OBGYN visits just because you can now get your birth control at the store. Well, okay, now uh, with our teenage daughter, how often should, she, 16 years old, how often should she be seeing her OBGYN? So uh, at 16, uh, we're going to recommend a once yearly visit. Um, but I, you know, I'm an OBGYN. Certainly, want to direct business to all uh, board certified yeah. OBGYNs. But you've got your choice of doctors. Um, if there aren't any problems having to do with uh, the gynecologic organs, uh, then you've got your choice of going to see an obstetrician gynecologist, a pediatrician or a family practice doctor. All of those would be reasonable and they should all be able to perform uh, the normal examinations, which, which aren't, mu aren't, aren't much. You don't need any invasive uh, in, in, uh, examinations on a 16 year old. Uh, basically just really need to listen to the heart and lungs, get a full history and consider birth control methods that are gonna be effective for her um, and they're gonna help her individual situation um, as far as what her cycles are like and any other symptoms she might have. So it doesn't have to be an OBGYN. I would recommend an OBGYN for women that are suffering with bad periods or pelvic pain certainly can't forget that a high percentage of adolescents and teenagers are going to lose a lot of quality of life to pelvic pain and, and a lot of them don't talk about it well that's true and that's always been something well well dr marchand you've you've helped uh piece some of my concerns uh so i'm not not overly concerned about the side effects of the medication that'll be made available over the counter and i still need to encourage women to come see you on a regular basis. Absolutely, don't skip your doctor's appointment just because you can pick up the birth control without a script. Yeah, absolutely. All right, is there anything you wanna to add to this? You know, we, I will try and drive people to your website. If you have any questions uh, that we didn't cover, uh, we'll make that information for his website, Dr. Marchand's website available. And you're involved in other things, aren't you? Yeah, research is the, is a very big part of my practice. Um, so that's, uh, that's something I spend a lot of time on. So uh, uh, especially looking at COVID um, and uh, other uh, surgical and OBGYN topics. Um, other things I wanted to point out, uh, it, 
I forgot to mention it earlier, but depression and anxiety are extremely prevalent in adolescents and teenagers. Um, not everyone needs medications, uh, but it, it is something that very commonly gets passed over. That could be something else that gets missed uh, as far as uh, uh, women who might just decide to go pick up their birth control at the, uh, you know, at the drugstore and not get a prescription, not see the doctor. So I'm hoping we don't see an increase in major depressive disorder or suicide as a result of this either. Um, and I, I just think it's it, it's kind of a funny and ironic that it coming this has come out of the fact that it, it, it took the Supreme Court to correct their mistake on the on the abortion laws to go ahead and make this come to be. So it's it's really conservatives that are responsible here for bringing this greater accessibility of birth control to women. Um, so and, that's kind of an amazing thing. And affordable. Yeah. And it most likely will be affordable. We don't know exactly what the O-pill is going to be priced at, but it's probably not going to be very expensive seeing generics of that pill with prescription right now are selling at about the $8 range. Uh, so I think uh, $8 a month. So I, I know they'll certainly tack on some fees. They've got to make uh, they've got to make their money and do their marketing, you know, pay for their commercials and whatnot. Uh, but I wouldn't predict this to be extremely expensive. Well, doctor, uh, why don't you, you want to leave us with some parting thoughts? Um, yep. So, uh, uh, thank you for having me on this show, and uh, I really hope that everybody takes to heart that you can't ignore your annual exams. You've got to stay up on your health and the uh, medical visits for your children, uh, even though birth control is available at uh, supermarkets and uh, pharmacies without a prescription. Um, and although this does seem a little scary, the birth control that they've allowed is really one of the safer ones you could possibly have. It's not great for cycle control or other things, not the best birth control in the world, but it is effective and it'll be safe and, and it won't be harmful for almost all women. Okay, well, that, that's good news. Certainly, it's, it's good to hear that. All right, everybody, this has been Justin Case and Dr. Greg Marchand bringing you American Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Remember, additional information and links are provided in this video. Is read more. Today is the day to subscribe to this channel. Please learn more about the Marchand Institute when time permits.